Welcome in to Real Deal Sports Talk. I'm your host, KP. We got a lot to talk about today. I'm coming at you early day today specifically because of all of the injuries that are going on around the league. It's it's just amazing right now what, we, what we're seeing. Um, so I got to talk to you guys before there's, uh, there's nobody left to talk about, right? So uh, let's get into it. Uh, a few things we didn't get to the other day that I was going to mention on the show, but I will now. Uh, really, before we get into all the action from today's games, um, big news coming out for the Raiders' move to Las Vegas as they have secured uh, what appears to be $750 million in taxpayer funds uh, coming their way for a new stadium there in Las Vegas. So that it, that's huge news to me. Um, should be huge news to you guys as well. Uh, it'd be interesting to have an NFL team in Vegas. We do know that, you know, NHL is moving a team to Las Vegas. Um, biggest thing going on in Vegas sports-wise outside of betting before that was the University of Las Vegas. And they really haven't had anything going since the late 80s, early 90s. So, you know, good for them, great for them, good things going on. Um... Let's see. In lieu of that, there's reports this week that there's talk amongst the NFL execs out there that it's already set in stone pretty much that the Chargers are going to be moving to L.A. next season. They'll make the move next season. They'll join the Rams there at the new complex that uh, Kroenke is building. And San Diego will be in the wind. And you know what? I say, hey, good for them. That's a great opportunity for both teams to make a lot of money. It's a great opportunity for both teams who were once in L.A., who once spent a large portion of their time in L.A., to move back. The Rams spent most of their existence in L.A. Not all, but most. Chargers started in L.A. So, hey, if the Chargers move, if that ends up being the case, that'll be great. That complex can easily support two stadium or two teams. Uh, that town can easily support two teams. And who knows, maybe one of the teams will have more of the fans that decide not to fight everybody who come to their game and act like a bunch of assholes that nobody wants to be around. And I'm sorry, that's personally why i rather watch the game, why i rather get Game Pass from NFL.com and watch the games that way. Because it's almost unbearable anymore to go and enjoy a football game. With all the drunken idiots, or the know-it-alls who are wrong about everything, or the high school studs who didn't mount to anything, it's hard to just enjoy the game anymore. If you're just, you know, a football fan, and you enjoy, you know, all the ins and outs, how the play unfolds, the way it works like a chess match. So, you know... We'll see how that plays out. We'll see if that's true about the Chargers. We'll see what happens there with the Raiders possibly moving to Vegas. Could be They're going to be great stories to watch, great stories to follow. Great story from uh, yesterday in college football, North Dakota State pulling the upset there over number 13, Iowa. And this is the same school that the Philadelphia Eagles first-round quarterback Carson Wentz went to. It's a nice little program they got going up there. Uh, they have won quite a few national championships here recently. So, you know, this is a school that could be looking to make a leap from an FBC school to an FBS school and move up in divisions a little bit. I think they're, they're showing they're most likely ready with the program they're developing up there and the way they're really able to compete with these top programs. There's something like 5-0 and now in their last five meetings with top 25 schools. Uh, you don't accidentally do that. You don't accidentally win three out of four national championships or whatever streak they're on right now. So congratulations to the Buffaloes up there. Who knows, maybe we'll see them in a uh, Big Ten or a Big 12 or a SEC sometime soon. Uh, protests around the league continue. Players are continuing to take a knee. Their content athletes are continuing to take a knee across all levels. Um, Floyd Mayweather has his Little League football team taking a knee. 
There was a high school football team that's taken a knee. Doug Peterson of the Philadelphia Eagles, the coach there, said he will join in if the Eagles decide to do a team-wide uh, protest today. I did not see if they did or not. Oh, wait, they play Monday night. So we'll see what they do Monday night, if that all comes out or not. Uh, Brandon Marshall did take a knee again today at the Broncos game. He is, however, saying that he's not planning on doing that throughout the entire season just until there's enough com conversation going on about um, his protest and what it means and moving in a direction towards change. And, you know, a lot of these guys are now putting up money, too. Um, we talked about that previously, but uh, Brandon Marshall, he's going to do $300 per tackle this season. Last season, he had 100 tackles. That'd be $30,000 he would donate personally this himself this season to charities to try and bridge this gap that we're seeing between our law enforcement and citizens that you know is quite divisive and it's pulling a lot of people apart because of you know maybe the way they were raised or the way they feel about law enforcement or the way you know they think certain things should be or how certain people should be treated based on their uniform and it's just another way that this country is being pulled apart so you know, respect to those who are still doing the protest, to those who still don't understand it. I feel for you. Um, I know what it's like not to be on the inside of some some uh, very good information. So uh, maybe you guys can come to our side. Uh, let's get to the injuries. I'm watching this Broncos-Colts game right now. Broncos defense is really stepping up here in the second half. Um, you know, the Getting to the injuries that are going on today, they're, they're, DeMarcus Ware is out. He's one of the Broncos that is out today. Donald Stevenson got hurt today. Um, there's just been a plethora, a plethora, I use the word plethora, um, of injuries today in the NFL, especially to my Lions. Um, it ended up really, between the amount of injuries and the shorthandedness we, we had and the amount of bonehead plays and then bad calls, um, we really just put it to ourselves today, and we'll talk about that here when we go over the scores. But the Lions lost Ziggy Ansah, Vanoy, Abdullah, another linebacker, Williams. Uh, Thomas Rawls went out for Seattle. Foster went down for Miami. Garoppolo for New England. Uh, I mentioned Donald Stevenson for Denver. Uh, Stewart for Carolina went down. Cromartie for Indianapolis has gone down. Woodhead went down, DeMarcus Ware I mentioned, Darius Butler went down, Moncrief went down, Doug Martin's down, Akeem Ayers is down, and that's just some of the names around the league that have went down are, are, are players that won't return to games today. Now that was what, 20 names? And that's only some of them? There's got to be some reason in this day and age where it's player safety, player safety, that we're seeing what seems like a vast increase in the number of injuries week to week. Um, and it can't just be, well, th there is a number of reasons why actually the preseason's too long. So the way they play guys, you know, 10, 13, 30 plays at a time in a game, they're not necessarily getting out there enough to have their bodies used to what is needed to play in an NFL game. The last collective of collective bargaining agreement when you took away the number of padded practices in the off season, that changed some stuff up. So you're looking at all these different factors that I feel like are leading to players increased injuries, sloppy play, uh, not being ready for the the increased energy level that takes place from pre excuse me from preseason to the regular season. Um, not having enough snaps that mean anything uh, little rinky dink snaps in game one of a preseason and then maybe a couple in the game two and then oh we'll play a half in game three and nobody plays in game four and we'll be healthy well that's not how it's turning out to be anymore I think they're gonna have to reevaluate relook at the system make some changes add some more padded practices in this neck bargaining agreement in 2021 I do believe there will be a strike I do believe the players should strike and I do believe they should hold out until they get <clears throat> more guaranteed money um, and a system that works better for the player 
Get some people involved at the bargaining table. Get some doctors involved, some tough scientists involved, some ex-players involved, some coaches involved. Not just league offices, not just GMs, not just these guys that if they have played, it's been way too long for them to be making any real decisions on what's going on. Similar to, oh, I don't know, our Congress and Senate. And let's put a system that's going to work for everybody, that's fair, that's equitable. Yes, it will focus on player safety. Yes, it will focus on making money for everybody, including the owners. But it's going to be a system that's going to be sustainable and make it to where football can stick around. And I think that needs to happen. I mean, but the number of injuries that I listed off just from today, and again, I mentioned, that's not all of the injuries from today. That's just some of them. Um, Something's got to change. When we come back from the break... We will hit five down. Hey guys, the NFL is back. It's time to win some cash playing fantasy football. The DirtCannon.com is a local company that has your back. They have produced over 60% winners on FanDuel, DraftKings, and now even Yahoo. The DirtCannon.com will help you build, play, and win. Build a better team with the DirtCannon.com. Use promo code RDST and get $5 off forever. And try the silver membership this week for free. Visit thedirtcannon.com. All right. While we were listening to that, thedirtcannon.com, definitely check them out for your fantasy football needs. While we were listening to that, Oakland scored and has tied the game up against Atlanta. So it's 21 all there with Oakland and Atlanta right there. All right. Let's get into it. First down. In first down, RG3, I'm sorry, but you're. You are probably playing yourself into Canada, bud. Um, This injury, it looks like you are now going to be out for 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, McCown came in. He started well today. They ended up fading horribly in the second half, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit too, especially with the way that game ended for them. Um, But it just doesn't look good. You know McCown's going to come in, and he's not going to do everything all-worldly, but he's going to play decent to okay every week enough to make you guys competitive and um you know rg3 is going to be left wondering again it's going to be another what if with rg3 when will he be healthy can he do it will they give him another chance next year all these questions are unanswered at this point and it's too bad because he he looked promising coming out of baylor he looked like you know he could be part of this new wave of athletic quarterback who could be a dual threat and uh Ultimately, undersized, too big of an ego, maybe. And uh, here we are. He's injured again. Second down. The NFL has come out. This is being reported by multiple outlets this morning. Uh, The NFL has admitted and come out and said that last week there were at least 16 calls in the Jags-Packers game that went the wrong way. Not all of them went against the Jags. Some went against the Packers, but there were at least 16 in that game that uh, were bad calls on that referee crew. And normally, I, I, apparently, I found this out today, that normally the competition committee only allows a team to put in 10 plays to look at during a game. Well, in this case, um, the Jags put in a ton of plays. <clears throat> NFL went back and looked at it and the whole game and all the calls that were made and the calls that weren't and came back with 16. Uh, Those are 16 calls that drastically changed the focus of that game. And um, who knows what the outcome could have been. Jacksonville might have won that game had those calls gone a different way. Or, you know, Green Bay could have won bigger. Uh, So it's unfortunate that there was that many in a game. That's the human element. We're not going to catch them all. Third game. All right, third down, Christian McCaffrey. This guy, I'm sorry, last year 100% should have won the Heisman Trophy. Uh, I don't know if it is the West Coast bias and the fact that a lot of the voters were asleep at the time. Uh, Stanford played a lot of their games. If that's the case, that's just stupid. Um, With all the ways to watch highlights and watch games and check news and see who's who and what's what in this day of sports, uh, if that's really a case against him, and a case for Derrick Henry last season, um, that's pretty dumb. Christian McCaffrey was the best player in college football last year. 
uh, bar none by far. When you go and break Barry Sanders' single season record by 600 plus yards, 